Discipleship Evangelism, Lesson 1, Level 1 Eternal Life One of the most familiar scriptures in all of the Bible is John 3.16. You know, it seems like everybody knows that verse at a young age. Yet I believe it really has been misunderstood, misapplied and misrepresented. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Traditionally, this scripture has been used to teach that Jesus came and died for our sins, so that we wouldn't perish. As true as this is, this verse is saying that the real purpose of Jesus coming to this earth and dying for us is so that we could have everlasting life. It just so happened that our sins were a barrier that stood between us and this everlasting life. It is true that Jesus did die for our sins. It is true that if we believe on Jesus, we will not perish. But there is much more to the gospel than that. The real message of the gospel is that God wants to give you everlasting life. Now let me explain that. The night before his crucifixion, Jesus was praying and he said this, This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ. This is coming from the author of eternal life, and the author should know. This says that everlasting life is knowing the Father, the only true and the only true God, knowing Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. That is what everlasting life is. Many people think that everlasting life is living forever. Well, every person lives forever. It is a misconception to think that when a person dies, he ceases to exist. The spirit and the soul leave the body. Those in Christ go back to God. Those outside of Christ are eternally separated from God. The body decays in the grave. The truth is, every person who has ever lived on the face of the earth will continue to live in spirit form. So to say that eternal life is living forever is not the whole truth. Everybody lives forever. John 3.16 Whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This verse makes it very clear that eternal life is not given to everyone. It's only given to those who believe in him. They are the ones that will perish. They are the, are the ones that have everlasting life. Some people would say eternal life is living forever in heaven versus living forever in hell. But eternal life is just what Jesus said in John 17, 3. To know God and Jesus Christ. It's more than an intellectual knowledge. This word know is used throughout scripture to describe the most uh, physical, human, intimate, personal relationship uh, you can have between a husband and a wife. The real purpose of salvation is not living forever in heaven, as great as that will be. The real purpose of salvation is to have intimacy, a personal relationship with the Lord God. There are multitudes of people who have cried out to God for the forgiveness of their sins and have their sins truly f forgiven, uh, but uh, have never had intimacy with God as a goal. But by not explaining the real purpose of salvation, we are doing it a service to the gospel. 
when we present salvation as something that deals with just spiritual things that will only benefit us in the future, in eternity, we are not helping people. There are some people who are living in such a, a literal hell right now on earth. Many are depressed, living in poverty, dealing with strife, rejection, hurt, failed marriages. People are just trying to survive from day to day. They are just trying to keep their heads above the water. By making salvation something that deals only with the future, many people will put off that decision because they are too busy just trying to, to survive today. They will put it off and they will say they will do it some other day. The truth is that Jesus not only came to affect our eternal destiny so we can live uh, forever in heaven and blessing uh, instead of the punishment of the curse of hell, but Jesus also came to deliver us from this present evil world. Jesus came to give you intimacy and a personal relationship with God the Father today, as recorded in in Galatians 1 and 4, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Jesus came to give you a help and deliverance in the, in the rough now and now, not the sweet by and by. Jesus came to bring you back into close personal relationship with him. with him. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to know you personally. Jesus wants to give you a quality of life that is greater than anything you could obtain through any other source. Jesus put it this way in John 10.10. 10, the thief, speaking of Satan, Cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. God wants to give you eternal life. You need that eternal life. God wants to give you abundant life and I believe that you need that today. That you want that. God, Christ died not only to forgive our sins but to bring us close to him. If you don't know the Lord, you need to know him for that purpose. If you're, you've already been born again, you need to go beyond just getting your sins forgiven and enter into everlasting life with the Father, which is intimacy and relationship, as we uh, covered before. Facts about eternal life. One, the purpose of eternal life. The purpose of the gospel is eternal life, John 3.16. Two, eternal life is knowing God, John 17.3. Knowing, three, God, knowing God is an intimate relationship, 1 Corinthians 6.16-17. 6, Four, eternal life is available now, 1 John 5.12. God wants a personal relationship with you. Revelations 3.20 Receive that. You can receive that today. You can walk on that today. Uh, and get into a relationship. Get into fellowship. Ask God to guide and direct you into an intimacy and reveal himself even to you in a greater way. Amen.